From what you learned over the last two weeks, you've started to get a better sense of what kinds of media will be best for what you want to teach and how your students learn. You're likely to find a few different tools to help you provide a balance of different media types. In choosing software to create your content, you definitely want to consider usability, both for you to create the content and for your learners to view it. There are some programs that are really easy to use and some that are harder. You'll find that you trade off usability for flexibility. Easier tools may be limited, but harder tools may have more options and functionality. Your plans for chunking also come in here, especially as some free tools can have limits on the duration of a video you can post. What software and support does your institution already have? Or what's your budget? There are both free and paid options to consider. Do your best to keep all these different considerations in mind when you make your choices, because no matter how much planning you do, someone is not going to see what you intended. There's too many browsers out there and different factors that affect how content comes through to different online users. So, design for the lowest common denominator. Make choices so that your content will be as accessible to as wide a group as possible. But know that it's rare for everything to work perfectly for everyone. Make sure you know what the limitations are, if there are any. And put those up front so people don't get frustrated if something doesn't work with their system. With browsers, you may want to say at the beginning which browsers you've tested with your content for the best view. You also have to take into consideration the size of the screen your learners are likely to use. More and more people are using handheld devices, so you want to make sure your content looks okay on a small screen, scrolling through smaller bits than you can see all at once on a larger screen. Even with a laptop or desktop computer, some people may have older monitors with lower resolution. This is another place to consider the demographics of your learners and the devices they're likely to use. Look for tools that will share your final content with what's called responsive design. The web page in which the content is displayed responds to the information it detects about screen size and grows or shrinks to fit. When you're testing out new tools, View a sample on several different devices in different browsers and make sure they're consistent enough for your needs. On your end, choosing software to develop your content, consider the hardware and operating systems you have access to. For example, every time a new version of Windows comes out, it doesn't work with a lot of different things because people haven't updated their programs to the latest version. Not all creation tools are compatible with all systems, so keep an eye out for that. Where will you store your media files? Audio, video, animations, and graphics do generate large files that take up a lot of space on a computer. While you're working, you may need an external hard drive to put all of your content on so that it doesn't take up all the space on your computer's hard drive. Of course, don't forget to back up your content. Cloud storage can really help with that. When you're ready to share your content with learners, where can you store it so that they can access it? Talk to your internet service provider or your library's tech support to find out about storing it on your library's server to appear on the library's website. If that isn't practical, there's a variety of services that store the content for you so you can link to it. Many social media platforms are oriented around sharing images, video, or audio. Remember, we already considered some of these during the community module. Don't forget that one consideration is privacy. If you want your content to be open to the public, you don't have to worry as much. But if you want content to only be accessible to certain users, you'll need to pay attention to the privacy settings of each platform you consider. Wherever you choose to store your content, make sure your learners can access it on the web at the point of need. If you're showing how to search the online catalog, put a link to your tutorial near that link so that people see it. If you put access to the videos off someplace else, they may not ever find it. Use icons to indicate audio or video. This will help it to stand out and help learners who prefer these formats to find them easily.